College recruiting is a difficult and challenging process. It's a game of high stakes for you and your parents. Because if you win, you could earn yourself a scholarship that's worth over $300,000. If you lose, you may have to pay for college yourself. And to make things more complicated, you know, you have different conferences, full, partial, and no scholarships, and the NCAA, which changes the rules from time to time as well. So it's no surprise that students and their parents are often confused on how to navigate the process. Now, this guy can't possibly cover everything that you should know about recruiting, but we'll try to address some of the critical mistakes that you should avoid doing in the recruiting process because these mistakes can cost you an athletic scholarship. We'll also give you our recommendations to improve your chances of getting recruited. Yeah, so let's get started. I think the first big mistake is to buy into the myth that if you're good enough, they'll find you. You know, folks were saying that when I played in high school football. And back then, college coaches weren't even using the internet. And there may be situations where it's easy to find a four or five star athlete, but most Division I teams are made up of two and three star players. So you need to learn the recruiting game and make it so they have to find you. To many athletes, waiting until your senior year to focus on your recruiting and then by then, it's too late. The ideal time to start your process is during your freshman year, even if you're not playing varsity. You can fill out college questionnaires and go to college camps to get a head start. By your sophomore and junior year, you should be developing the relationship with college coaches, attending college camps, and sending out game film. The earlier you start, the more opportunity you have to get noticed by coaches and prepare for the future. Now, if you're a junior or a senior, it's, it's not too late. Uh, you just need to accelerate the process and work the system. Educating athletes has helped students who decided to play college football during their senior year. They really waited until the last minute. And it wasn't easy, but they did receive offers. So let's talk about critical mistake number two, over-relying on your high school coach. The amount of support that you'll receive from your high school coach can vary widely. I used to hear a lot of times complaints from players um, about their coaches not helping them to get offers. But the bottom line is that you're ultimately responsible for your recruiting process. A high school coach has 75 players or so on his roster. Even if he wanted to help every player on his team, it would be impossible for him to do that work but then also prepare the game plan for that week. And wins and losses are ultimately how he's going to be keeping his job, not how much he can help you play at the next level. Now, the coach should be part of your team, but you need to manage when and how to use his influence. Uh, if your coach is willing to vouch for your work, your ethic, your character, athleticism, this can really impact the interest from recruiters. So you need your coach to be on your corner, but at the end of the day, you're the one in the ring. If he's willing to do more for you, it would be ideal if you could review your college list, help you identify the colleges you should pursue. Then you know your coach is willing to endorse you. And there's one potential problem, though, if you're getting your coach's review. Your coach is aware of your work ethic in practice, games, and in the weight room. If you're not giving 100% in these areas, I mean, he's not going to lie on your behalf. So you better start earning that recommendation now. Yeah, I mean, it's his reputation that's on the line. I would add one thing. If for some reason your high school coach isn't helping you, then find an assistant coach, a position coach, or even an opposing coach that thinks highly of you. Okay. Uh, the next critical mistake in recruiting is not being realistic. What do you think? <laughs> I think that's pretty common. If anything, getting a realistic view of yourself, how you are athletically and academically, is one of the most critical points in the process. It's also one of the toughest issues for athletes and their families to come to grips with. Because there's really no point in striving to get a, you know, a D1 scholarship if you don't have the size or skills to compete at that level. I agree. In fact, that educating athlete, the only athlete we were unable to help get into a school in six years was a young man that received an offer from an FCS team, a full scholarship. But his father was convinced that he should be playing FBS. So they passed on the offer and the young man never went to college. Listen, you may have been a superstar athlete in high school and done great things have the biggest heart on your team, but as we all know, there's certain things that you can't teach. Speed, height, basically the scale that's required at the next level. You know, you have to objectively determine if you're a D1, D2, or D3 level athlete. Because if you spend all your time chasing D1 schools or schools in the wrong division, you may miss some great opportunities for an offer elsewhere. You know, and there are a couple of ways that you can figure out which division you should target. Uh, the first step I would take is, I'd recommend that it's in researching college rosters for the position that you play. Check the height, the weight of the players in your target schools. Are you undersized or do you have similar measurements? Also, you can ask your high school coach where he thinks you can play in college. Whether you like it or not, 
that college coaches are going to be asking your high school coach what they think you should be playing. Um, you can go to a camp, a combine, and showcases. That's where I think they really fit in, these combines and showcases, your first year, second year, because you can compare yourself with other athletes at your age and position. Not that you can't be a late bloomer, but I, I think that's a good place for those kind of uh, events or platforms. And lastly, you should compare yourself with the athletes on your own team, in your conference, in your state. That, that will give you a good gauge of where you are. Pursuing the wrong colleges is the most common reason that many talented athletes don't find a college team. So if you're realistic with who you are as an athlete and pursue the right colleges, then your recruiting process should be a success. Now, all this doesn't mean much if you don't know how to contact coaches. So that brings us to critical mistake number four, not knowing how to contact college coaches. You know, I think if you think that one or two sentences pointing to a highlight video or an email template that you cut and paste 50 times is going to do it, then you better think again. If you want college coaches to be interested in you, you have to demonstrate your interest in them. Right. All you need to do is a little research on a college and tell a coach why you want to go there. Right. So your initial email should contain you know, some of the following things. Uh, an appealing subject line. This is the most important section of your email. Because a college coach is getting hundreds of emails a day, and if your subject line is not appealing, he may never get to open your email. Include your best measurables and your attributes in the subject header. Now, in the body of the email, the first paragraph should be your introduction, obviously. Make it personal, but include your year of graduation, what position you play, the school, and things like that. On your second paragraph, it should include your qualifications and your accomplishments. Also include a link to your highlight video and attach your transcripts. In the last paragraph, you should state why you're interested in this college and whether the coach thinks you fit in. So that's where you do your research and that's how you customize your template to fit the school that you're pursuing. One of the cardinal sins often made at this step is having your parents make the initial contact. Um, you know, we all know how parents can be, but they definitely want to help and they're going to do everything to help you achieve your dreams. That being said, though, these colleges and the coaches are recruiting you, not your parents. A parent emailing or calling, calling a college coach, it's a little bit biased. Um, so that may work against you. College coaches are looking for mature, confident adults who can take it upon themselves. The coach wants to hear your level of interest in this program. They can meet your parents later. And, and that's an ouch for me because I definitely, once in a while, would send out emails on your behalf uh, to contact schools. Lastly, you should contact coaches through different media platforms emails, direct messaging, a telephone call. Although coaches are not allowed to DM, like, share, or retweet recruits until September 1st of their junior year, they can still friend, follow you, and see your DMs. If they like your highlights, they can look for your email and piece your messages together. If you can use these three contact methods to your advantage, you'll get their attention. All right. So now you know a little bit about how to contact coaches. The next question is, how many coaches should you contact? That brings us to critical mistake number five. That can keep you from getting an offer, not contacting enough schools. Yeah, the, the recruiting process is a numbers game. The more colleges you contact, the better your chances to find the right match. It's really that simple. Very similar to dating. Just because you're interested in a girl doesn't mean the girl is interested in you. So check your ego at the door and ask a lot of girls before you get the right one. Because as much as you want it, your favorite college may only need two players at your position, and they may already have their commitments for these two spots. You're not gonna find your college match by sending a few emails whenever you have the time. I sent a lot of emails, direct messages, and called a lot of coaches, sometimes multiple times before I can get in contact with them. We believe that you should always have between 60 and 80 active colleges in your list. Maybe 20 that you have a realistic shot at, 20 that are dreams or maybe a stretch, and then 20 that are your backups. If some drop off, replace them with new ones. And for the last critical mistake athletes and parents make that keep them from getting an offer is having a false sense of security. And by this, I mean many athletes believe they're being recruited when they really aren't. The worst part is that they stop pursuing other schools because they think their work is done. Let me give you some examples of when athletes may mistakenly think that they're being recruited. So a situation when you receive a questionnaire from a school or get invited to a camp. Both of these are normally coming from a GA or a grad assistant, or if you receive a letter of interest from a college coach, but it's not handwritten. This may be done by a grad assistant and the coach may not even know who you are. Yeah. 
Now, on the other hand, if the following things are happening, you're definitely being recruited. If a coach regularly calls you on the phone, you're being recruited. Yeah. If you receive handwritten letters, sometimes even signed by several coaches, because like, later, right before they give you an offer, sometimes they want to get more enthusiasm and make you feel like you're part of the family. So several coaches may send, you know, written notes or, or all at one time sign a postcard. Also, a coach may come to one of your games to specifically watch you play. That, that's definitely an indication that they're interested. And the last thing is that you get invited to an official visit, which is not offered to everybody. It's usually somebody who's offered. You should never have a false sense of security until you sign your national letter of intent, or at least have a written commitment from a school. Verbal offers may be given and sometimes taken away. So keep your options open until you're certain that you have your spot. I've seen friends that start out well in the recruiting process, but at some point develop a false sense of impression that they're gonna get an offer from their preferred school. So then they stop talking to the other schools that they've been talking to, and then they realize that offer that they were hoping for is never coming. Now they have to play catch up. I personally know somebody who I played against that had tons of offers and was an All-American and lost most of them because of the things he posted on social media. Yeah, you should also keep in close touch with those schools that are offered you. If you see that they're not responding or going cold, call them and check their pulse. Because uh, if you haven't committed, they have the right to give you an offer to someone else. I hope you learned something from these six critical areas of the recruiting process. As I mentioned earlier, we couldn't possibly cover all the things that you need to learn to get recruited in just one session. So here's what we've done. We took the system that we've been using on educating athletes to help over 100 student athletes get full scholarships and created a course that gives you a step-by-step -step guide to improve your chances of getting recruited. And I don't know if you're a sophomore or a junior, maybe even a senior, but if you're not currently communicating with a lot of college coaches, then you're, you're already behind. You're going to need somebody to train you. You're going to need somebody to guide you. My brother and I were lucky to have my father walk us through the process. And at the time, he was learning from coaches, recruiters, and friends. But now he's an expert with over 100 cases to prove it. So here's what we've done. We spent close to six months creating a video course with all downloadable content that you're going to need to launch your recruiting campaign. We call the program the College Football Recruiting Blueprint. And here's how it works. We first walk you through the foundation, the pillars you need to develop your recruiting strategy. This involves a solid understanding of the process, especially from the coach's perspective. Right. We teach you how to create your target list of schools, how to build your support team, your academic and athletic assessment, and the tools you need to succeed. The second part gives you a tactical step-by-step -step process on how to communicate with coaches in much more detail than we've been able to do in this brief seminar. We'll give you the exact things to say, DM, text, post, in order to keep college coaches engaged through your recruiting process. We will teach you how to create your own highlight video, your email template, your phone call script, college visit strategy, and what to do at college camps to get yourself noticed, and much more. In the final section, it's all about closing the deal. Getting your offer and understanding the commitment process. How do you push your favorite school to finally offer you? Yeah. What options do I have if I'm a senior and don't have any school interest? or how to commit early and finally end the process. We literally tackle anything you can imagine in recruiting and we're giving you the tools to address them. You can download the college list funnel and email templates, the phone scripts, critical questions to ask, highlight video guidelines and other tools for success. And to cap it off, the most important tool for saving you a lot of time and time is one of the most critical resources in this process. We are giving you the key contacts at each Division I FBS school with their phone numbers and emails. So you don't have to Google every school directory. We're providing this for you as part of the program. So we're saving you an incredible amount of time. We're saving you from making critical mistakes that can cost you the offer that you desperately want. And we're saving you a huge amount of money instead of going to useless camps or hiring a recruiting consultant when you could do it yourself by just using this course. If this is something that you're interested in, then click on the link below or go to howtogetoffers.com and get it all by becoming an Educating Athletes partner. Once you become a partner of Educating Athletes, you will first gain access to the College Football Recruiting Blueprint and all the tools that come with it. Secondly, as we publish more video content and tools, you'll have access to them through the same membership portal at no extra charge. And finally, most importantly, as a member, you will help Educating Athletes conduct more seminars and expand our services to student athletes nationwide. Listen, just let us help you save an incredible amount of time, let us save you money, and let us save you from the mistakes that you can't afford to make. Become our partner, and it may change the quality of your life. Imagine how it feels to play college football at the next level. 
and to graduate without any debt. I did it, and you may be able to do it too, by clicking below. Enroll in the College Football Recruiting Blueprint today. I hope to see you at the beginning of the course.